Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Sorry, I missed uploading a video yesterday. Uh, kind of tired after work, getting ready for the vacation coming up. Going to Montreal for two days, and then Fredericton for two days, and Halifax for three, and then home. So, uh, the video schedule might be a bit impacted. I'm going to try to do what I can where I can. I'm going to take my laptop with me. Uh, at that point, if I'm able to get videos up on schedule, great. Um, so, going to do a video today about discrimination and invisible disabilities. I've been reading a lot on Facebook and on Twitter how people, not necessarily just with a stroke or brain injury deficits, other unperceptible, unimmediately observable deficits are being discriminated against and are being told by uninformed, uneducated, and ignorant individuals, well, you look fine. I've done a couple of videos on similar topics, but we're going to discuss this one in specific. So, I'm going to use me as the, the immediate example. I'm six foot two, 240. I'm, I've gained a few pounds since the stroke. I haven't been as active as I'd like to be, but that's going to change soon. You wouldn't tell... Now, this is all situationally dependent as to what time of day it is, how long I've been active that day, where I am, uh, and other environmental factors. To look at me initially, you would not be able to tell I've had a stroke. I have no physical damage or structural damage from any form of surgery on the brain case. So, I don't have any scars from my stroke. Um... The only thing medically that was done was a uh, breathing tube, uh, like the nasal thing, and I had a whole bunch of IVs in. And then those little pads so they could see if I had a heart or not. So from my hospital experience, you wouldn't know. Like there's, there's no outward signs that you can physically look at me and go, hey, he's fucked up. But I have some lasting deficits that have either been obvious and present since the stroke or things I have had to learn, unfortunately, experientially since the stroke that are my deficits. And I, I have to amputate my tongue almost three to six times a month, sometimes more, when people try to give me the, oh, but you look fine. Oh, there's nothing, like, I can't see anything wrong with you. Well, yeah, you can't see it because all of my deficits, with a few exceptions, are almost invisible. So, I initially started out with a really bad stutter, really bad vocabulary issues. Uh, I had very prevalent, very present verbal um, apraxia, meaning, and I did a video about this, uh, verbal apraxia, that, that's where you, there's the muscular misfiring between the brain and the neuro, neurological context between the brain, the muscles, and me trying to form words. That's what it sounded like I was stuttering. I also had, still have an anomia. That's where I'm having word finding, word selection issues. I, I, I can't think of the word. Um, and again, it's not a you're trying to write a paper for university or college or some professional paper and you're looking for the best word for emphasis and effect. Um, I just can't find the word. Like, I know the word I want to say, but I can't think of it. I have expressive aphasia, meaning my brain knows exactly what I want to say. I just can't get it out. It just, it's just not going to come out. So those are my communication deficits. You wouldn't know I have them, generally speaking. Uh, they do become more present as the day progresses. If I get stressed or fatigued or overly anxious, sometimes emotional, it, they're just not there. Then you get the mobility issues I have. I have a bit of a balance issue since my stroke. Uh, the neurologist says it's not stroke related. Well, I'm going to say you're wrong because I did not have this balance issue before my stroke. So I don't know, is it the medication that I'm on? Is it the stroke? Is it the both? I, I don't know. And I haven't really pushed the issue yet to get an, an answer because I don't really need one at this point. 
So I have a bit of a proprioception issue, a bit of a balance issue. Well, again, depending on the day, depending on the time, depending on the activity I've been, how active I've been, depends on how kind of wonky I get. Now, I know I still have foot drop. And I know, depending on the environment I'm in, I, I take more shuffly, kind of short strided paces. When I'm at work, for example, um, I know my pace and gait is not the same as it could be normally in the world. Uh, and that's due to a bunch of various factors. So I know there, it, it, I present physically differently. I know I do. So me walking at times can be a bit of a shit show. Uh, bending over, forget about it. Um, no. <laughs> no, I, I don't bend over well anymore. Um, or at all, if unless I have to. Other things you wouldn't know would be... At home, I don't have to wear sunglasses because I don't have any overhead fluorescent lights. And at home, I can control the ambient light level. So if it's getting too bright for me, I just turn shit off. Um, so in the world, I have to wear sunglasses under almost most in-store lighting, be it fluorescent. Uh, like places like Costco, I've been fairly successful in the na na navigating Costco because they have a lot of uh, skylights and they use sodium lighting. They don't use the overhead like fluorescent tube lighting. Uh, I've been fairly successful there. Uh, other stores, I immediately have to put on my uh, sunglasses. And yet again, in other stores, I need to have sunglasses and earbuds because there's just too much ambient noise. I have, because of my stroke, a sensory defensiveness, sensory overload, sensory flooding problem. I can't filter out background noise. It's just, there's just so much going on. I can't filter it out. And that, that again, to look at me, you can't tell I have that. You will have no idea that I have any of those because there's no physical, with the exception of maybe the foot drop, if you know what to look for, with the exception of the maybe of watching my strides, if you, again, know what to look for, um, there's no, there's nothing you can just look at me to go, he's got anomia, apraxia, um, aphasia, uh, foot drop, uh, he has problems with mobility, he can't bend over well, he has balance issues, <clears throat> he has to wear, he's, 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 he's fluorescent light sensitive or, or other types of light sensitive, he's noise sensitive. Like, there's no way you're going to know. No way. And... I've had a few very detrimental, very disrespectful, very demeaning, disenfranchising, and discriminatory interactions in retail locations. Um, and that's all because you have insensitive staff that want to pass a judgment. <clears throat> so I'm on the Twitter today, and someone posted something up about their experience in a restaurant. They have a invisible deficit and because of that, they need a straw to drink from a glass. The waitress was smug enough to say, well, you look fine. I don't think you need one of those. <clears throat> That's nice. I don't give a fuck what you think. I really don't. <clears throat> I care about the individual and their deficits, their difficulties, and they already know what they are, right? So now you have someone in a position, and I don't mind, me personally, I've been open about my stroke. Um, I'm not usually this open about my life. Uh, but then again, I had my stroke at work in front of 150 people that I kind of sort of know. Uh, and I figure... Stroke is a very misunderstood disorder. Stroke is a very undereducated issue. Most people are going to automatically assume stroke means young people. Most people don't know someone who's survived a stroke per se. Uh, I, I'm lucky. I'm incredibly lucky. And I, I like to admit and acknowledge as often as I can that I had or have had 
one of the best outcomes that possibly could have been had due to a stroke. Um, I would be in the almost full recovery category to use my neurologist language. Him and I would debate the meaning of that sentence, but that's okay. So I feel a bit of an obligation because I have a history of working in mental health. I have a history of working with brain injured clients. Um, so I, I know brain injury academically. I know brain injury clinically. Um, but now I know it experientially. So I have a little bit more insight. I, uh, not to be hyperbolic or a sense of hubris. Um, I have a little bit more insight than your average stroke folk because of my history. I also got to watch my grandmother go through a stroke and, and the aftermath therein. I've, I've seen the wretchedness that is a completely disabling and dysfunctioning outcome from a stroke. I have seen that personally and that scares the shit out of me. Um, another, and so <clears throat> I'm open about my issues. This other individual appears not to have wanted to have been open about their issues because again, now I have to share medical shit with someone that I don't fucking know. And so I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what they're going to do. I've had people try to tell me, you know, oh, you know, you don't look like you've had a stroke. Well, what exactly does that look like to you? Like, so some of the things people can say, some of the things people can do when they, I'm going to say because they're socially awkward and they don't know what to say. Um, they say some of the most belittling, demeaning, thoughtful, or sorry, thoughtless, just excruciating shit comes out of their noise hole and <clears throat> they think they mean well. Or... They want to pass a judgment on your invisible deficit, whatever that is. Um, I also have a small problem with my memory. I still have PBA or emotional regulation issues at times. Uh, like, I've got about nine things going on that, depending on the day, they can present in any combination. But they're all invisible, with the exception of the foot drop in my gait. And you'd have to notice those. So... For those of you that don't have an invisible deficit, for those of you that don't have the side effect of a disease, disorder, or dysfunction that is extremely difficult to detect, and this could be anything. You know what? Someone who's a first responder or ex-military who has an OSI, an operational stress injury, which is also known as PTSD, they might not like crowds. They might not looking down a street and seeing a random bag of garbage just lying on the street that's out of context. Uh, they might not like certain smells. Uh, they might not like certain times of day. You know, their injuries are they're not physical. Th those injuries are psychic. Those injuries, by far and large, are invisible. Someone who has um, some form of neuromuscular or skeletal deficit where they can't physically lift a glass so they need a straw you know what i needed a straw for the first couple days after my stroke because i didn't i'm right-handed i did not feel comfortable holding things in my right hand so i might have needed a straw um, or i would two-hand a mug i would literally pick up a coffee mug like this like i was six because i needed both hands to stabilize the mug and i would have to drink like that. It looked fucked up, but I had to do that just to drink a coffee. <clears throat> so, for people that want to try to assign an arbitrary value, for people that want to pass a judgment about someone's level of deficit, or someone's level of skill, or someone's level of dysfunction, someone's level of disability when you have no reasonable clue you are completely ignorant and uneducated on the topic why even open your mouth just nod grin and deal with it if they tell you you know what I don't have the ability to do this don't question it 
Luckily, in the states, you have the Americans with Disabilities Act. You have one piece of federal legislation that protects everyone with a disability. Sadly, in Canada, in my country, we're not that lucky. There is no one piece of federal legislation. They're patchwork of provincial legislation and some federal legislation for federally regulated or protected occupations or anyone that might work in, for the federal government. It's very disheartening. It's very discouraging. It's disheveling. Because right? <clears throat> I have ended a relationship with a specific store in my city because of the way I was treated within the first week or two after my stroke. Um, because someone that works there basically was an asshat and said things that, you know, didn't need to be said. So I've discontinued a relationship with them. Um, because it's just easier not to have to try to go back to that space um, and not want to lay into someone. And and I've seen this on the various stroke groups I belong to on Facebook, and I saw a post today on Twitter, and it just enraged me that someone who has a deficit, and that doesn't matter what that is, someone who has a disease, again, that doesn't matter what that is, someone who has some form of dysfunction or disability in their lives, and again, that doesn't matter what that is. If it is invisible, that means you can't see it. And who are you, short of being a licensed medical mental health practitioner needing more information, you are just a lay person in a restaurant, a lay person in a store. Um, I don't care who you are. You have no right. You have no ability. You have no training, experience, judgment, or necessity to judge someone else's level of functionality. You don't. You do not have that agency. You do not have that privilege. If they tell you they are disabled, shut up and deal with it. Because I'm in a position between three to five times a month where I almost have to amputate my tongue because someone wants to say something that is completely discriminatory about my level of ability or lack therein, depending on the situation. And on that note, I'm going to step off my soapbox. If you like what you've been watching the last, count it with 12 months and 6 days. If you like what you've been watching the last almost 12 months, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone going through a post-stroke or post-brain injury journey, or you know someone that's supporting someone going through a post-stroke or post-brain injury journey, please point the channel out to them. They may get some value out of the content that I generate. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, that's strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Or you can reach reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, the handle Twitter handle is in the description down below. Or you know what? Leave a comment. If there's something you want to see me cover, is a conversation you'd like to have with me, some information you'd like to bounce off me, whatever, please just get in contact. And if you happen to see what appears to be either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone, someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost your sense of balance. Someone who has uh, vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, they only see it in grayscale, they see a little dot in the world, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone who has facial droop, there's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial mu muscles on one side. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation and context. Someone who has um, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or an inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.